Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to video four in our Scan to 3D part design series. Now, we've already talked about the basics of the series, the overview about what we're going to cover, and we talked about all the tools available to you with Scan to 3D. We've taken a look at three of them so far the Mesh Wizard, the Move Edit Offset options that we have, and then we also looked at the Curve Wizard. So now we're going to get into creating a surface. So I'm going to start that by going into our Surface Wizard. The first thing we need to do, just like with the other tools, is select the mesh we want to use. Then we can go to our next selection, and here is where we have our two options, the two distinct paths that we can go down. I mentioned this briefly early on when we were talking about the tools, but just to reiterate, we have two different types of surface wizard operations that we can do. We have the automatic creation, and we have the guided creation. Now the main difference here is that the automatic creation is going to automatically patch this surface as best it can to match everything. Now this means all the edges that we have, all the borders of your surface, all the, the details and the features, it's going to do its best to try to match that geometry. The guided creation will take us through using things like lofted surfaces, boundary surfaces, and a whole host of different surface tools that we can use to create the geometry to get as close as we can to this. Now, we're going to take a look at both options, but we're going to start with the automatic creation. So we simply select automatic creation and we go to the next option. So there are two different things that we can do here. We can modify the surface detail. Now, if you drag the slider all the way to the right, it's going to try to capture as much detail as it can from the surface. Now, don't mistake yourself into thinking that that will give you a better result because if we zoom in here, you can still see that we have some ripples, we have some dents. There's some areas where we don't have a very clean surface. We still have this rough scan data that we're working with. It's still not a complete perfect mesh. It's, it's not perfect smooth so we want to be careful with the amount of surface detail that we add so if we crank this thing all the way up all the way to the, as high as it can go we could really end up with a lot of patches on the surface and a lot of information we're trying to capture that we really don't need so for the most part I'm gonna leave this slider detail in the middle unless we have to manually modify a few things the next thing that we have is this edit feature lines. Now this is an important step here because if it's giving you bad patches or, or bad surfaces when it's creating it, you have the option to manually modify how those polygons are defined. So I'm going to select that option and I'm going to let this thing generate the patches for me, the surfaces, and that way I can see what's going on here. Now if you remember when we trimmed this surface, uh, when we were using our mesh prep wizard, we didn't trim the bottom. We trimmed all the sides, but we left the bottom all the way down to basically the bottom of our scan data. Now we did use smoothing, we did try to clean up the boundary, but there is some information down at the bottom of the scan that is potentially going to produce some problems for us. We left it there and we're going to take a look at what we can get out of this, basically this automated, this automatic surface creation. And then we'll most likely have to go back to our mesh edit wizard, clean it up a little bit more, and then bring it back in here. But it's a good step and it's a good example to show you what happens, what's going to be created, where certain types of scan information, where this mesh is going to produce problems. So you can see here, now that we've produced the patches here for our mesh, we have a surface errors option. Now if we scroll this thing out, you can see that we have an area in this bottom right hand section that it's telling us that it has an error. It cannot produce a patch for this area. And as I mentioned, we didn't really trim the bottom of this. We left it how the scan data came in. So you can see that we have a lot of surfaces down here that are really trying hard to match this geometry, but it's really not very good surfacing. It's not going to be good for us to use later on down the road. So there are a few things that we can do here. Now, one thing we can do is go back into the mesh prep wizard. We can trim off some of this material and you'll notice that everything up here, these all look nice. They're all very clean patches and we don't really have very many issues until we start to get down to the lower portion. So that's probably the best option unless you need some of this information. The next thing we can do is take a look at how we can modify or add these feature lines. Now in the case of this bottom down here, it's really not going to do much for us in terms of giving us better information because it's still going to have problems here. But we can zoom in and we can do things like manually modify these points and re-update the preview. So we can move anywhere that you see a red dot, we can manually move that to another position. Now you'll notice that you get a little indication on the screen that tells you when you moved it to a place where it's going to be okay. Now a lot of times 
you're going to find, especially with the end of your mesh down here, that you're going to run into an error where you can't move this to a good spot. You're not going to be able to plop it down somewhere that's going to give you a good result. We have options to relax feature lines. So this allows us to take the feature line, such as this one right here, and relax it. So if we zoom this thing around and, and kind of get in closer, you notice that the original line was pretty wavy. And now we've taken that option and relaxed it a bit. Now if we update the preview, it's going to crank away and it's going to it's going to update all of our patches and it's hopefully it's going to smooth out that ridge that edge right there and that'll give us a better resulting surface simply by using that one option to relax that line so you can see here once that line has been relaxed we can get a better resulting surface based off of it because it's now it's not trying to follow all of those funky edges and the curves that were associated with that mesh but you will notice that now that we've cleaned this edge up, we're getting some more problems. Now we have two issues down here that are failing. So you'll notice that it's producing some problems by fixing other areas. And this is going to be a common case when you're dealing with these meshes, when you're trying to use this auto option, this automatic surface creation, to match some geometry such as these bottom edges where it's, you know, it's got real bad geometry that you're trying to match. So let's look at some of the other options. We have options to delete feature lines. Now this is a feature line right here and we've only got one, so we don't want to delete that. And then we also have the option to add feature lines. So we can add feature lines from points between other points. So anywhere you see a feature line such as this one here, we can select it and we can start creating a new feature line. And what will happen there when we create a new feature line, it'll give us new areas for these patches to be built. So if again, if we update this preview and take a look at what we can get by updating and adding that feature line, it's going to give you a different result every time. And always, you know, we have that surface detail slider we can go back to and we can reduce the amount of surface detail we want or increase it as well. So those are both valid options and definitely things that you should consider and you should follow whenever you're dealing with these mesh files and you're trying to manipulate them into an end result. The last thing that you want to do is rush creating one of these mesh files into these surfaces because if you don't spend the time on the front end trying to clean them up, trying to smooth them out, once you get it into a surface that you're going to start designing off of, it's going to be a real pain and a big headache to go back to the original files and start tweaking and modifying them again and you're going to lose whatever work that you've done up until that point. So you can see by simply adding this feature line that went from our horizontal line all the way down to the bottom, it gave the file, it gave SolidWorks some sort of indication of how we want to break up all these different polygons, all these different panels here. So it fixed the issues that we had in the bottom of this file, but if we zoom in, you can still see that we're creating surface with all this bad geometry here that we really don't need. So in our case, the best thing that we can do is go back to the Mesh Edit Wizard clean it up a little bit more, remove any information we don't need, and that way the end result is going to be much better for us. So let's go ahead and escape out of this and go back into the Mesh Edit Wizard, and then we can go ahead and remove some of that extra material here. So I'm just going to draw a line across the bottom because I don't need all this information down here. And even if I did, the information that is captured in this bottom edge, it's not real good anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that information and then still go through the mesh prep wizard. We're not going to do any simplification. We're going to leave everything as is. We can use the smoothness option again. So if we want to smooth this, this file out more, it will process it and it will do a little bit better job smoothing it out. And again, we want to smooth out the boundary. We want to clean up that bottom edge as best as we can. We'll go to the next section. There are no holes to fill here. The next section, again, we want to deselect to automatically launch that surface wizard because we want to come out, we want to save this file. We don't want to accidentally go into the surface creation wizard or let's say even if you wanted to use the curve creation wizard, you don't want to go into that and lose any information. So now that we've saved this, again, we can go back into the surface wizard using the automatic creation option again. We're going to leave that slider in the middle and we're going to select edit feature lines and let this thing generate and we're going to take a look at the resulting polygons, the resulting patches that are going to be used to create the surface. So you can see here this is a completely different result. Because we cleaned up that bottom edge and we no longer had to try to hit all that bad geometry that was created at the bottom, 
you can see that the result is a very nice symmetric patch. So all these patches are nice and we don't have any of those funky five, six, seven sided patches where they're all converging at a point and we have all that, that stuff that we need to deal with and modify. So we still have a few options that we can do here. So the first thing I want to do is relax this feature line. So I want to smooth that out. The next thing I want to do is add a feature line. So we can see based on the shadow that we want to add a feature line here and get a little bit better idea of what the surface is doing. And we also have the available option to add any sort of feature lines in this area or do any kind of local optimization in this area. So now that I've added that extra feature line and relaxed the original feature line, let's just update the preview and take a look at what it's creating for us. So you can see now that we've added that additional feature line, we've actually pretty much added twice the amount of patches, a little bit over twice the amount of patches actually. And that's because we've added some extra geometry it's trying to hit. We do have more options here. We can add more feature lines and we can add them in certain areas to kind of help this along if we need to. Now, of course, you know, this is just like surfacing. You can add too much information. So we could remove that feature line if we thought that the resulting surfaces were better. So let's just take a look and make sure that what we've done here, that what we've added, has actually produced a better result. And we can also modify the surface detail slider, and that will change the number of patches that we got here. If we reduce the slider, if we bring it down just a little bit, we can update what we're working on, and then we can essentially reduce the number of patches that we have. If we slide it to the right, we will increase the number of patches because it's trying to capture more information here. For us, even though we added this, this sort of patch in the middle that may or may not be a good result for us, I'm going to go ahead and leave this and go on to the next step. So you can see with the next step, it says model completion. Surface model is complete. We need to inspect it and take a look at it. Now, for whatever reason, the model is hidden. So in a lot of cases, what you'll have to do is hide it and then show it again for it to be visible. Now you can see here, if we turn the edges on, and if we remove the real view graphics, we get a good idea of what we're dealing with here. And if, as we rotate this around, you notice that there are some imperfections, there are some areas that could use some work. Now, at first glance, everything looks normal, but you'll notice that as we select the surface, we're actually selecting all of these patches we created. So you can imagine if we kept the original version where we had you know dozens of patches just down in this bottom area, it could be really tricky for us to work with that. Whenever I create one of these automatic surfaces using this automatic option, I always like to go to my evaluate tab and take a look at the curvature. So this is a real important step and it's going to give you a good understanding of the curvature of the surfaces you're dealing with. So you'll notice that the black areas are pretty small, negligible, almost no radius of curvature. The blue areas have more, but you can see that they transition in between here. So you'll, you'll notice that we have a nice area where we have that change in curvature where we would expect it along these edges for that dimple in the upper section and then where we added those two feature lines. But what we really want to focus on here is areas like this where we have this green and a sharp transition to a different color and then we have these issues down here where we're producing problems. So areas like this and then areas in the middle where you see again that transition from one color directly over to another whether it's blue to black here blue to gray or whatever it might be these are areas that are going to produce in my instance in my experience an undesirable result whenever you're trying to use these surfaces you're not going to get that nice smooth created surface that you would expect when you're dealing with your models in solidworks because of that we're not going to use this surface. We're going to go through the other option and take a look at what we can create. But I want to save this one out. So I'm going to save it as scan to demo automatic. So that way I can go back to just the mesh file and reuse it because now the mesh is hidden. We're not using it anymore. We've jumped into using this surface. So hopefully you'll stick around for the next video where we take a look at the other option for creating our surfaces. But as always, if you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.